When you're directing a film, your biggest job is making an end product that's true to your intention. Things will always change along the way. For example, we're shooting a proof of concept because our full film wasn't feasible during the pandemic, but creating a unified shared vision amongst your creative team is crucial to your success. So if you're a director, here's how to work with a cinematographer to make sure that happens. I think the one thing we were trying to avoid was bisexual lighting. Mike and Shirley are coming later today and we're gonna do a lighting test here in my apartment. Those ones? are good at 800. You definitely don't want to figure it out on set the day of. Hello, I'm Alden. I'm a filmmaker who's documenting the process of making a sci-fi short film so that you can learn from all our successes and failures along the way, showing you how it's done, not telling you. This production diary is about working with a cinematographer to bring your vision to life. Your director of photography is one of your biggest collaborators as a director for the look of the film. And so this production diary is gonna walk you through how I worked with the DP for both Friend of Sophia and the robosexual, Shirley Chan. I'm gonna go through the process I take before I even reach out to a DP to make sure I can communicate my vision to them. And then also show you what the collaborative process looks like when coming up with the look of the film. I'm gonna talk about what camera we're shooting on, the technical workflow, working with a gaffer, and then doing a lighting test to troubleshoot problems well before the actual shoot day. There are three major steps I take when I work with my DP. The first is collecting all the reference materials that convey my vision. The second is communicating that vision effectively with a lookbook. And the third is collaborating with that solid creative team. First, collecting visual references. Inspiration can come from truly anywhere, paintings, photographs, TikToks, but mostly I pull stills from film and television. And there's two amazing websites for this, Film Grab and Shot Deck. Shot Deck is a paid service now, unfortunately. It used to be free for beta testers, and then when they changed to a paid model, they gave the beta testers a super good deal. But if you wanna use it now and you don't have an account, you do have to pay a fee, which kind of sucks because the search functionality within this website is incredible. You can search for all sorts of key words from directors, actors, to what's in the shot. So like volumetric lighting or close-ups of eyes, literally anything. Film Grab is totally free and it also has some amazing stills, but you have to search by director or by film. So you kind of have to know what you're looking for, but there is some keyword search functionality in there. It's not quite as robust, but it's still super excellent. Sometimes I struggle to articulate the specific look and feel I'm going for. So what I'll do is I take all of these images that appeal to me for some reason, put them all together and then see if there's any kind of common trends between them. Maybe it's the lens choices, the color palettes, the lighting design. Whatever it is, that becomes how I articulate the look and feel of the film. And over time, I've started to see trends in my own work that I keep exploring. So I'm starting to get a general sense of like what you know a project's going to look like if I'm working on it, which is awesome. Once you have all your visual references and you're able to articulate what you're going for, it's time to communicate that vision by assembling them into a lookbook. So let's say you have a script and you're ready to look for a cinematography. And having a lookbook helps because it gives them a visual sense of the aesthetic and tone. And it lets people filter your screenplay through that visual lens that you're creating in this document. Um, I'm gonna put a video together of how to make a lookbook because there's also some text it should include as well. And they're useful not just for finding crew, but also for pitching projects. For Friend of Sophia, the proof of concept for the robosexual, here's what I put together. When you scroll through, you get this kind of like immediate sense of the world you're in. I had two pages for cinematography photography, one for compositions and one for lighting design. And with this lookbook and script, I reached out to a cinematographer friend I worked with at HuffPost, Shirley Chan. She's a documentary DP who's worked for Slate, NBC, and HuffPost, where we work together. Shirley's one of those DPs that whenever she was assigned to one of our episodes, I was really happy because I knew that the footage was going to turn out extremely well and perfect. And she's also an excellent person to work with. Thanks for uh, that great intro. Of course. Um, and yeah, you make me sound way cooler than I already, like that I think I am, but uh, okay. You are that cool. And this is the third part of the process, collaboration. When you bring anyone into the fold, their visions and references and ideas will influence your own. Some things stay the same, but a lot of things also change. Personally, I really love like Wong Kar Wai's work and that has um, a lot to do with just like mirrors and stuff. He likes to create like kind of like a voyeuristic kind of look. He's really good at depicting like isolation and loneliness, which I feel was like something that I 
noticed in the character Jane of just like, she is going into like a completely unfamiliar kind of environment, trying something new, but like kind of always just like looking over her shoulder kind of feel. So I wanted to bring in that like voyeuristic, lonely vibe. When I talked to Shirley, she had a, a shot list. She had a PDF of a bunch of references and what she was thinking and what I was thinking were perfectly aligned, like 100% perfectly aligned. So that call was awesome. Our main references for cinematography are Mr. Robot with the negative space and the framing, Wong Kar Wai with the voyeuristic camera, and Euphoria with its lighting design. And all of it is kind of packaged under this umbrella of the biggest sci-fi cyberpunk reference, Blade Runner. I think in terms of color palette, we wanted like bright contrasting colors. And I think the one thing we were trying to avoid was bisexual lighting. Um, but also at the same time, we wanted something kind of similar to it. And I believe we were, you know, we were thinking of a lot of different kind of color combinations. Like we were even considering like, like red and green or like red and blue. And then we were kind of just like that like blue and pink vibe, that bisexual lighting, I don't know about it. And then we would like, you know, send each other kind of like color inspiration of just like, oh, hey, from this film or from this film, there's this color and this color. They did it this way, this way. Shirley sent me some references to another filmmaker short that you liked. This other film she was watching, there was very much this vibe. It was kind of a nightclub scene with a lot of like blue and magenta light. It feels very like, you know, cyberpunky. And it doesn't feel like overdone bisexual lighting and I like it a lot. It just is evocative of like a cyberpunk sci-fi color palette. And the only negative to doing that color scheme was because it's overdone. But I'm really drawn to cyberpunk colors, especially magentas and purples. So this is the color palette we chose. Because we're shooting this pre-vaccine, we had a tiny skeleton crew, which meant no departments. Shirley would have to do everything for the camera department. We both have documentary backgrounds, so we opted for wider lenses and a handheld camera. Shirley uses an EVA-1, and that's what we went with for the shoot, both to save money and because she knew the camera well. But we rented some cinema lenses from ShareGrid. Some directors have very, very strong feelings about what camera they use. I'm more of the mindset that I don't really care as long as the end product looks the way I want it to look. That might be because I have a documentary background, and so I'm used to just using whatever is available to me and making it work. And so I've kind of like brought that to narrative filmmaking as well, where it's like, here are the references, here's the look, you choose what kind of camera you're gonna use. I think I, may, I have some stronger opinions on the lens choice. Um, so when we're renting cinema lenses, like what kind of look um, those are gonna bring. I don't know, do you, do you have a specific brand of camera you like to use? Um, let me know in the comments because I'm curious to know why. Another thing to consider when choosing your camera is your technical workflow. And what does that workflow look like from the moment you take the footage from the camera's memory card to your final deliverables? We're shooting in 4K, 422, 10 bit. My plan is to work with the 4K footage all the way through so that I can have a true 4K master, including all the visual effects, which does increase render times and stuff considerably, but I wanted to have that 4K file because, you know, I think about how when 720 and 1080 were both acceptable HD formats, and then 720 became obsolete. I'm seeing a world in which 4K becomes the new norm eventually. So I wanna be ready for that. So it has some longevity in whatever that future looks like, but also create the 1080 exports because that's what film festivals want. Normally there would be a step after the edit for sound and color, but for this proof of concept, because I'm doing it all on my own to keep costs down, I'm doing all of that in Premiere, which normally wouldn't be the case. When I eventually am talking about the workflow of the full film, the full robosexual film after this proof of concept, you'll see a proper color and sound workflow as well as some other VFX software like Unreal Engine. For lighting, Shirley and I worked closely with our production designer, Cheyenne Ford. Definitely check out the production diary about designing this sci-fi world if you haven't already. A lot of the lights were practical, meaning within the scene. And all the others, Shirley and I worked with a fellow HuffPost colleague, Mike Caravella, who's our gaffer. We had a pretty solid mix of lighting situations. We used Astros, Quasars, Aries, and the LED strips. Once we had everything ready to go, it was time for a camera test. 
Mike and Shirley are coming later today and we're gonna do a lighting test here in my apartment with the LED ropes that we have. And also I'm gonna put all the costumes either on like Michael or somebody and just sort of like see what the costumes look like with this lighting setup because the colors will look different. Yeah, this is cool. Those ones are good at 800. As far as I'm concerned, like pre-production and testing is like quintessential. I mean, you can't cheat that. You definitely don't want to figure it out on set the day of. I mean, be as prepared as possible. You want to make sure that they work, one, but that they're also playing with the camera. They are gelling, if you will, um, no pun intended with the gel situation. <laughs> Just to get an idea like how light is falling on people. Is the hair light gonna work? He's obsessed with hair light. I'm not obsessed, but I think it's uh, quintessential. It's kind of like cooking something and you, and you leave out an ingredient because you don't think that you need it, but most people take it for granted. Some of the LED strips might have a flickering effect on camera, so that needs to be accounted for. So all these little details, you know, they, they all add up and like they're fixable on set, but you don't want to waste time learning on the fly. Once you know everything's working correctly, it's time to storyboard your shots so you have a concrete plan for production day. Plan the shoot, shoot the plan. Let me know if you found this production diary helpful in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because the next production diary is super exciting. It's about the special effects makeup we use to make the androids in the film.